Hello everyone, James Baldwin here, back for another video, and this time we're going to be looking at F1 2020, and we're going to set a world record lap at Suzuka in the wet. So uh, yeah, let's have a little look into it. Alright then, so to start off with, we're going to look at the setup. I think I copied Enzo Benito's setup, so just nicked it off the leaderboard. 510 wings, 50-50 transmission, geometry right, right, left, left, as we say in F1. Suspension 3, 6, 4, 10, 5, 6, so quite high, really high on the right height. 150 and then tyres minimum, so those are pretty standard. Okay then, so let's get into the lap. So we're going to use Mercedes. Obviously I would be using the McLaren. I think that would be my first choice. But in this game, the Mercedes is the fastest on time trial. So to set a world record or get anywhere near a world record, you need to use that car at all tracks. Um, so you can see here, before we even start the lap, we're thinking about how to be quick. So knock off the bollards at the final chicane. So when you come around again for your actual lap, they're not there. You can cut the corner a bit more, get a bit more lap time. So to set up the lap as well, you want to V off the final bit of the chicane. And it goes for any track really, just make sure you get the best run possible to start the lap because then you're starting the lap in the best possible way really, aren't you? You're thinking ahead and you're, you're shaving bits of lap time off your lap before you've even started it. And then as we're approaching turn one, what you want to do is when you get to the 50 board, so we're in line with the 50 board there, we're still on full throttle. So you turn in flat, there's that much downforce on these cars, even in the wet you're going in flat. Um, and then as you start to approach the apex of turn one, we're applying brake, but we're not just doing the brake to slow down the car, we're using the engine braking as well. And in this game, engine braking is insanely powerful. So it's something you've got to use. You can't just rely on the brakes. You need to really use that engine braking as much as possible. Also induces a bit of rotation in the car as well. So it gets rid of the understeer. The game is inherently quite understeery, so it gets rid of that. Uh, so we're going down to third gear for turn two, up to fifth before we've even hit the apex, just getting ready to get the exit right because it's so easy to get the wheels spun up, get wheel spin and then when you get wheel spin you're not going forward, you're losing lap time, could potentially result in a spin. So you're looking for that balance between wheel spin and making sure you get out of the corner with as much torque as possible. So fifth I figured out was the, the gear for that. Um, and you can see as we're getting on the power, we're staying away from, well, we go on the curb a little bit and then we're into the S's. So the S's, it's all about the line you take through here. It's not really, there is one perfect line. We miss the apex there a little bit. So there's lap time there, but here we hook it up quite nicely. We're kind of feathering the throttle, but making sure we're in the right gear and uh, we get a decent run up Dunlop. So we're hugging this nice and tight. And then as we approach Degna one, so I'd say about 55 meters, we go just before the 50. We're starting to brake, we come off the throttle, start to brake, start to turn the wheel as well, thinking about the apex. And you're going so quickly here, it's it's a bit of guesswork. I mean, I'd say, oh, I just nailed it, I'm, I'm that precise, but there is a bit of guesswork. Um, and it's also worth noting, this wasn't my first lap. This I know it says lap three, but it's probably like lap 15, 16 for me. So it's it takes a few bites of the cherry to get it right. So you can see here, a lot of lock on the wheel, about 45 degrees. We go fully over the curve, so we're very close there to getting an invalidation. Uh, down one gear for the engine braking, and then we're already thinking about Degna 2 because there's a lot of lap time in this section from getting the whole thing right. I could nail Degna 1, but compromise Degna 2 and lose lap time. So we're over the curb here, making sure we brake in a straight line. So in this game, especially in the wet, you need to make sure any heavy braking and he any heavy accelerating you're doing in a straight line because that's if you don't do that wheel spin lockups that's when they come into the equation and that's when you start to lose more lap time so here we're off the curb and then we're starting to brake a bit more when we're off the curb because there's more grip on the tarmac compared with the curb down to second momentarily and then again we're using that short shifting technique up to fourth accelerating in a straight line and and so as we approach the hairpin what i would do in real life is go really deep on the brakes go fully out wide and then veer off, get on the power. But this game is in real life. Uh, there is not really a game or sim out there with very good wet physics. So what you've got to do is brake really early, use the engine braking to stop the car to avoid a lockup, and then just get it into the hairpin, like be as tight as possible. When you kind of get halfway around, you can see we start to feather on the throttle just to get the car rotated. Uh, and then from this point onwards, it's all about being patient, minimizing wheel spin. That's the only thing you need to do. Uh, and you can short shift, you can regulate the throttle. There's not really a set way to do that. 
but we managed to do it pretty well. There's probably time in it, don't get me wrong, but we uh, we certainly don't lose time to our delta, which is important. And so on the run to Spoon, after the 50, lots of break initially, while you've still got downforce working on the car, so you, you don't get a lock up. Uh, trail off the brake quite quickly down to fifth gear use the curb on the inside there to induce a bit of rotation then what we do is well, I'm so worried about understeer and running out wide and getting an invalidation on the exit I'm starting to use the throttle to rotate the car like we always do mid corner just to get it rotated but I probably get a bit too aggressive on that and you can see there we're counter steering we're, we're correcting the slide to the point where I, I, I think we lose lap time there from that. So I'd say over the course of the entire lap, we probably lose two, two and a half tenths, what I can see anyway. So uh, it, by no means is this the perfect lap. I'm sure one of you watching could and will beat it, but you know, at some point, but it's not bad. So it's a good reference lap. Uh, you can see here down to third, short shift to fifth for the exit. We're, we're always forward thinking you have to in this game because you're going so fast you can't react. I think you've got to be proactive um, and as I say we managed to get the line right, the gear right, we got on the power pretty nicely. Trying to stay off that curb on the exit as well because the curbs on this game as I said before they have less grip than the tarmac so try and stay on that tarmac in the wet as much as possible. In the dry you can probably just go over it. On the run to 130R which even in the wet on this game is it's not easy flat if you get the wrong line you do end up getting loads of oversteer for the final chicane i'd say about 120 meters i I'd, I'd full brake making sure i'm really maximizing that initial brake on the braking zone down to second gear just to get a bit more rotation to the apex i'd say we could probably take more curb there so but there's such a big risk of getting an invalidation uh, you got to kind of find that balance and we're already on the throttle thinking about the next bit trying to get the car rotated with the throttle Again could take more curb on the left there. We don't so this whole next section is a bit compromised We're up to third to minimize wheel spin by short shifting Up to fourth and from this point onwards It's just about regulating the throttle as well as you can to get out the corner as quickly as possible uh, You can see we get we see, you know, going into the chicane, we were very, very excited because it's a good lap at this point. We get a bit too punchy on the exit, and you can see here, loads of wheel spin. There's lap time in that. And across the line, it's a 137.611, which, at this moment in time, is the world record. And so if we have a little look at the leaderboard, you can see we pipped Enzo Benito to that world record, used his setup, um, and there's Michael Romanides, Brenda Lee, so some pretty uh, well-known people there on the esports scene um, but for this video that is it so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something and uh, who knows maybe one day you can go and set a world record on F1 2020 yourself if you're after more F1 2020 content like this then make sure you go and check out the setup guide or one of the other tutorials also for more racing esports content in general visit overtake.gg or go and check out the YouTube and social channels but from me this time it's goodbye